Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of this Manchester United career mode. This is episode 23 and I hope you guys are enjoying your day. I would like to thank everybody that's subscribing to the channel, everybody that's uh, leaving likes, dropping comments, positive comments as well. So yeah, if you're new to the channel and you just clicked on this video, please subscribe because we've got a lot of career mode content to come from this series. So we're going to be kicking this episode off with some contract negotiations. I'm not too fond of Scott McTomney if I'm honest with you. But because of his overalls and uh, what his average rating is saying, he's saying that he's doing well. So I'm just going to give him a contract extension and also a booster on his contract, giving him 127k per week. Next we're going to get into a game against Watford. So we're away from home, we're at Vicarage Road and we do have a good record against Watford. They're not a hard team to come against. You know sometimes you find these bogey teams in FIFA. Yeah, Watford's not one of those for me. So we start this game off with an attack with Mason Greenwood. I take a shot and I miss it dramatically. And I go into instant replay just to prove how fucked up this game is. Like, why would you do such a thing to me? You can see that I've aimed it correctly. In this next clip in the ninth minute, I have the ball with Bruno Fernandes and I'm just running at the Watford defence. I give it to Sancho who squares it into Van Beek who rolls it into the bottom left corner to make it 1-0 to Man United. I'm on another attack in the 15th minute. I give it to Rashford who plays it through the legs of one of the defenders and squares it to Sancho who taps in on the far post to make it 2-0. In this next attack in the 32nd minute, I have the ball of Sancho who heads the ball down and Fernandez volleys it. I think that was a really good goal in my opinion. That could be a contender for goal of the year. So we have a ball swung in by, by the low. It's headed down by Rashford and uh, Greenwood taps it in uh, for 4-0. So all the goals came from the first half. We ended up winning this game 4-0. So all our goals came in the first half, which means we did slow down a bit in the second half, which I don't mind. I rather reserve our, our, our squad for the next game, which is against Arsenal. We're going to be hosting them in Old Trafford. Uh, our record against Arsenal is a bit it's up and down. It is a really fierce rivalry. There's a lot of uh, shithousery that goes on in this match. A lot of uh, poor tackles. Decent, decent football gets played. So we're back with the voiceovers. Manchester United versus Arsenal is a big game in the league. Last time we played them, we did end up beating Arsenal. So here we are, we're back with another game. Arsenal against United, we're in Old Trafford. The last time we played Arsenal, we did draw against them. Our head-to-head -head is up and down. We have beaten them once in the league. We've drawn against them once in the league and they've beaten us in the cup final. So this is our fourth encounter with Arsenal in this career mode so far. Oh no. Ball's played in behind, there's uh, Lacazette, it's through on goal, takes a shot on David De Gea, stands his ground and makes the save. I'll try counter-attack straight away, there's uh, Rashford, oh, gives the ball away to Partey. Uh, Guimaraes plays it forward and Varane is alert. Uh, looks like Blackburn are losing 1-0 to Tottenham, Lo Celso managed to grab a goal. So it's a must that we get three points in this game. Dropping points will be really crucial in the title race. A ball crossed into the far post. Martinelli catches the ball really well. Jaden Sancho plays it to his left. Has a Mason Greenwood. Uh, as you can see, we have 68% possession, but we haven't taken any shots on goal, which is quite shocking. It's not like us at the moment. Arteta does have a does have his uh, tactics set up correctly so far he has nullified a lot of runs in behind they've been dealing with crosses quite well as well but anywho the whistle has been blown for the first half is over first half is over quite a shocking performance Jaden Sancho hasn't had quite a good time on the right hand side no one's had a good match so far except the defense maybe Anasio and Varane they seem to be on top of any ball behind well, hopefully there's going to be improvements in the second half. Uh, so as it stands, Tottenham are still leading 1-0. So in the second half, we need to up the tempo a bit and uh, yeah, show some show some fight. This looks like we're, we're defeated. Even though it's still a draw, we do look defeated. It's like we're giving up in the final third and we're not trying to basically penetrate their defence enough. For Arsenal... Manages to squeeze a pass into Martinelli. A shot is blocked by Enarso in the end. Lacazette... 
almost almost found found some space and wiggle room to get a shot off. Well, he did get the shot off, but it was denied by Anasio. I need to figure out a way to break down the attacks and counter quick. Mart uh, Martin Odegaard takes a shot, turns onto his right foot and is blocked by Anasio. Anasio's all over them. <laughs> uh, I, I must say, he should be man of the match so far. He's probably the standout performer in this game. So Arsenal have a corner kick on this right-hand side. Uh, Mason Greenwood not making the run. I'm not too sure what he's playing at. There's Greenwood into Rashford. Marcus Rashford with a shot and a save by Leno. How has he not scored that? It was a quick break. Mason Greenwood didn't help, to be honest. He wasn't. He didn't look motivated to get forward. Okay, there's Martinelli to Nuno Tavares. Uh, Saka, um, oh, Odegaard takes a shot and again, David Gea pulls off a save and he takes another, oh, okay, this is, this is getting a bit too hot now, this is a, <laughs> it's getting way too hot for me, Lacazette with the volley and De Gea pulls off another save, De Gea is on fire in this game, the defence is doing really well, so uh, two changes are going to be made, Anthony Martial is coming off of Greenwood, he's had a really terrible game, Greenwood, he hasn't been involved at all, and I'm bringing Oliver Johnston on for Bruno Fernandes, who's also had a shocking game as well. But just, just weren't good enough. As a Schirmeni plays a ball in behind into Martial. Anthony Martial on the ball. Oh, cuts in on his right foot. Martial retaining the ball and a nice block by Ben White to deny me an opportunity. Look at that. Sticks his right foot out, hits him in the shin. So you have a corner in the dying moments of the game. It's the 88th minute, if I'm yeah, if I'm correct, it's the 88th minute. Uh, I need to be strategic with this corner. We haven't had many in this game. To be honest, we haven't had many opportunities on goal in this game. So uh, here's Varane. Ball swung in. Ball still around the penalty area. Headed by Schumeni and another save by Leno. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what it's going to take to create a clear-cut chance. We're snatching that crumbs right now. Uh, we need to show some aggression and win this ball back. Maybe we can be the team to get the last attack in. Get up. Well done, ref. Good decision. Good call. Uh, we have opportunity to count. Here's Marcus Rashford. Plays it into Martial. Here's Pedence. Pedence in the dying moments of the game. There we go. Oh, my God. Daniel Pedence has won me the game. Literally the last few moments. That was the very last attack. <laughs> I don't know how that even transpired. How they allowed this to slip in the last moments of the game. Uh, I was thinking of running alone with Rashford. Then I saw Martial. And then I saw Nuno Tavares cut across and leave Pedence in so much space. And for some reason, Leno wasn't even protecting his right hand side of his goal. Okay, so there we go. We have won the match. May United have come out on top. We've got the three points. Uh, those were some crucial points just now. Uh, I don't know what the score is at Tottenham in the Tottenham game. Uh, they were away, so it isn't at Tottenham. But yeah, we should check after this match to see uh, how they've got on. Ah, uh, that was really intense. <laughs> So that goal from Pedence was really crucial because Tottenham did end up winning at Ewood Park 2-1. Uh, we still maintain our three-point gap. If we did drop those points, they only would have been one point behind us. Next, we have a game against Inter Milan. We did smash them 5-0 at home and we're going to be going to San Siro to face them for the second time. And uh, the team that starts, uh, we're going to have David De Gea in goal. We have Aaron Wan-Bissaka at right back. The centre-backs are going to be Anasio and Lindelof. At left back, we're going to have Luke Shaw coming into the side. Uh, CDM, we're going to have McTomney. Uh, Fernandez is going to be at right centre mid. Van der Beek's at left centre mid. Uh, on the left, we have Rashford. Uh, up top, we have Greenwood. And on the right, we have uh, Daniel Pedence, who played really well in the last game. So, we return to the San Siro for this Group G match. The second game against Inter Milan in this group stage. We did front them 5-0. 
at home in Old Trafford. Uh, we just need to see how we get on in this game. There is a lot of rotation that has gone on in this uh, into this lineup. And they have fielded a really strong side. They aren't a weak team, uh, as you already know. Their front, the front line consists of uh, Martinez and also Werner. Martial being hunted down by Hermosa. I'm chopped down, and he's been, he's gone into the book. Hermosa did not need to do that. <laughs> I'm still yet to see Dean Henderson play for them. What was the point of them signing for 35 million? He's literally gone to be second fiddle to another goalkeeper. I did try to help the man out. I didn't want to be second fiddle to my uh, David De Gea. At least I'm not the one that's making them rot away on the bench. Into Van der Beek. I pl play a nice ball out to Wan Bissaka. Oh, fine Pedence. He doesn't take a shot straight away. For some reason, he takes a touch. And he runs straight into the traffic. Uh, 70 minutes played. Still ain't made a change yet. Uh, Von Van der Beek's brought a player down. He's not in the book. Didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that at all. For Mason to make a run. Greenwood makes that run. He's through on goal. Mason Greenwood against Handovic. And he does that. What the actual fuck, man? What the actual fuck? <laughs> two matches. I haven't seen you in two games. And you do that. There's a oh, Greenwood again. It's just, just fucking up for me. It's Pedence. Into Rashford. Oh, Bruno, one-on-one -on -one of the keeper, and he fucks up as well. What the fuck is going on? We have two minutes to go. You have an opportunity to make it 1-0, and you do that. What is going on with the finishing? It's gone. There we go. We've drawn. I'm really annoyed with that performance. Two one-on-ones. We've missed them both. Flipping annoying. Uh, we are still through to the knockout stages, but I, I do want consistency, despite... Being in a really good position, I don't want any complacency to creep in. We're not even in a position to be complacent. We still got another six months, six months of the season to play. So if we get complacent this early, then uh, yeah, things can take a turn for the worse. So next we have a game against Burnley away from home. We're at the Turf Moor Stadium. Uh, we are starting with a 4-3-3 formation. We have David De Gea remaining in goal. wan comes into the team again. Varane, he's making an appearance again, uh, replacing Lindelof. Narsil's at the back with him. Uh, Luke Shaw's at left back, uh, playing two games in a row now. McTominay's at CDM. We have uh, Van der Beek at left centre mid. And Oliver Johnston with his first start in the Premier League. Uh, Sancho on the right wing, Greenwood up top and Rashford on the left wing as well. So yeah, let's get into some highlights. So in the 10th minute, I have the ball with Jaden Sancho. He dinks the ball over the top and Mason Greenwood volleys a nice goal. A nice shot into the back of the net, getting back to his goal scoring ways. I have been harsh on him, but for very good reasons lately. Uh, so we have Mason Greenwood on the ball again in the 19th minute, just running at the Burnley defence. Uh, ends up giving the ball to Rashford who hits the pulse of his left foot shot. Uh, so, yeah, in this game, Oliver Johnston was subjected to a lot of bullying. Uh, it's quite sad. This guy is only 17 and they, these grown men are just targeting this guy. Uh, as you see, he's had really... Uh, he had two rash challenges on him. Referee only blew the whistle for one, which didn't really mean much in the grand, uh, grand scheme of things. Uh, in the 33rd minute, he does get his own back. Sancho squares it into him and he scores while injured and he runs off to celebrate his first, pre uh, not his first Premier League goal, he scored against Liverpool. I was about to get my facts completely wrong. But look at this little piece of skill here, getting his own back on Corne, uh, just uh, bedazzling him with a little cutback. Luke Shaw gives it to Van der Beek, who uh, plays it into McTominay. I then give the ball uh, to the right to wan -Bissaka. Here's a Greenwood bursting into the box, ends up uh, winning the ball again. And then he crosses it and Van der Beek volleys it in. So yeah, that was a great build-up play and it all started with Oliver Johnston, the star boy. Look, this is a really good player that we have on our hands. I'm really lucky to have found him. I don't know what to think about uh, the situation because I don't know if his injury is that serious because he's playing balls like this, like it's like next to nothing. Uh, wonderful player. He's, he's really, really uh, good to, to have a player like him in the team. So in this next clip, I switch play again. Here's Juan Bissaka. I play it into Greenwood. I do pop off a nice long shot, but Pope does make the save. 
and also to add Palistri has now agreed a deal to go out on loan to Borussia Dortmund. It's going to be a short term loan and uh, hopefully he does uh, get a lot of game time there and develop. So we ended up winning against Burnley, uh, it was an emphatic win, uh, one of our young players uh, did get on the score sheet so that's one positive and Greenwood is back to goal scoring ways, uh, we ended this game 3-0. So we have really terrible news, well it's not too terrible, Oliver Johnston is going to be out for a month for a hyper extended knee, it did not look like that in the instant replay that he extended his knee, it just looked like someone bashed into him. Well, whatever, he's out and uh, it's quite frustrating because he was actually making some good strides in the first team. I'm probably going to have to start promoting other youth players as well, so we're not just relying on him. Uh, yeah, we do have a lot of players to pick from, so yeah, there's nothing too much to worry about. Fantastic news, we're looking at the table now and as you can see we are 6 points clear, meaning Tottenham have dropped some points um, from that last fixture that we played. Uh, we are first place with 33 points, uh, Tottenham are second place with 27 points. Uh, third place we have Everton and uh, fourth place we have Wolverhampton, they both are level on points. However, Everton has seven goals on the goal difference uh, chart, whereas uh, Wolves they have six. Uh, Chelsea are fifth place with 23 points on the table, Arsenal are sixth with 22 points on the table. 7th we have Man City with 21 points and Liverpool are 8th with 20 points. So that, that there is a bit shocking to see uh, we see from 5th place to 8th place those are the teams that we should be seeing battling for top 4 but right now they're, they're not in great form. The table hasn't taken this full shape anyway. I keep saying this every episode so yeah I don't really need to repeat it again. You guys probably already understand the concept of the Premier League. Just yeah, just expect the unexpected after February. Let's take a look at Group G in the Champions League group stages. So United were still on top with 13 points, uh, one game to go. Inter Milan are second with 8 points. But the main thing we need to take a look at is Real Betis because they're in a really sticky situation. If they drop points in their last game and Hadrick Split somehow win their last game, uh, they will be completely out of Europe. So that will be one interesting thing to see and have uh, some we have something to look out for basically in in december let's say around the 12th the 13th so yeah i want to see some drama okay that's it my slimes my guys uh, my brodies yeah that's it that's the end of this episode if you made it this far please remember to leave a like if you're new to the channel subscribe to the channel uh, there's a lot of career mode content to come and it's all going to be based around this series for now and uh, yeah, drop some comments below, let me know what you think of the injury to Oliver Johnston. Should I promote more youngsters as well, not just him? And uh, also, let me know what you think about our performance against Arsenal. Were we really lucky to, to get that last minute goal with Pedenz? And let me know what you think of Pedenz as well. This guy, he's just an unsung hero. I know I talk about him from time to time, but the amount of times he's pulled me out of shit, I don't talk about him enough. But yeah, I hope to see you in the next episode. Goodbye for now.